Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five-minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. I'm Wired to Inspire, Mentor from Afar, with Robin Nicole, the Inspiration Specialist. extensive physical and they discovered that there was a nodule on my thyroid and they said hey, you can't take it out of you can you know maybe it could be something right. they remove it and it was stage two cancer uh, on my thyroid um, and you hear the reaction from people here yeah you know uh, you should have saw the reaction from me when I, <laughs> right. uh, but you know what I didn't skip a beat you know I went to and I got some early detections mm-hmm. and I understood that I had a challenge and if I would attack it now then I wouldn't have let it attack me and uh, I had that removed I did didn't miss anything. I was out partying and dancing. You know, two days later, not that I should have, but right, um, right. but but I wanted to share this information with people because what would I had went through if I decided to just stick my head in the sand and go, you know what? I'm not going to check into stuff. It happens. It happens. It happens to everybody else. I would have really been, uh, you know, uh, I would have really had some big, big problems but, on the road. Because the one thing that the medical community can agree on is that early detection really increases your chances of having a success. It's not a guarantee, but it increases your chance. So how are you now? How are you? I am I am absolutely great. I mean, you know, the, I have to monitor it for the rest of my life. Uh, you know, I have another half of my thyroid still in. Um, and in the event that it comes back, I'll be able to fight it. Thyroid cancer is a very slow-growing mm-hmm. cancer. And, you know, you really, uh, you know, um, inspired me a lot because of your public awareness about how we should uh, look at these things and mm-hmm. take them on. So, so, But I'm totally great. So nobody, don't send me any twin. Twinkies or bake, bake Alaska. Well, maybe Twinkies, but don't send me a lot of stuff. I'm good, and I want to share this with people because that's what success is. It's staying in your family's lives. Mm-hmm. It's being around, and that's what success is. Because you enjoyed the, the birth of your third child last year. My third year. child, little baby yeah, Minka. Right. Yeah, um, <laughs> And wanting to make sure it absolutely you're the factor. I have three beautiful daughters, and you know, I wanted to be around. I want to be here to walk them down the aisle. I want to be there to mm. protect them, and I want to be there for them to keep yelling at me and ignoring me. Mm-hmm. And um, and and this is how it happens by going out and people getting mammograms, colonoscopies, endoscopies, uh, your pap smears, and all the things to find out what's going on because you can prevent this and you can stay around in your family's life. We need each other. We need people. You know, you say that in this afternoon. I'm having my mammogram and my sonogram. Just so this so happens. Yeah, yeah, but, but I'm glad that you said this and, and, and that you want to go public with it and, and, sh- and share this with people because uh, in, a, in a lot of communities, especially in the African American community, there is a sense of okay, I'm going to bury my head in the sand. I'm not going to. I'm not going to deal with it. And you're saying. You can't do that. You no one can to. do that. And you know what? If, if, if my calling was for God to put me on a stage to be able to change one person's life, then I know why I'm here. But, you know, there's a saying that, you know, a man with his health has a thousand dreams. A man without his health only has one. And you have oh. to understand that's what success is, is being able to get up every single day and be happy. Mm, make your mess your message, and you're doing that. Absolutely. How's everything going with the show? The show is great. Our finale is coming up this Friday. Kevin O'Leary still a really bad, mean person. <laughs> uh, and everybody... You know, even nice to you after all this? No. Oh. No, not at all, not at all. And, uh, you know, and you know, we're making people uh, hopefully rich and or uh, their dream come true, and they're going on and hiring other people. And, you know, it's really been a good run. Shark Tank has been so good to me and to so many others. What, 200 episodes? Man? We're going to come up on our 200th episode. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank, for having me. Thank you, thank you for sharing this very, Absolutely. very important message. Yes. And if you have a loved one and you're out there, just not you, tell your parents, tell your kids. Make sure you, uh, you go out there and get Thank yourself back. Thanks so much. Wow. So I bet a lot of you who tuned in to listen today, you probably had no idea that I was going to come that way with the story about Damon John. To be very honest with you, I didn't know how I was going to come with the, situ- with the uh, story about Damon John. Um, mentor from afar, God had given to me in 2017. So as you see different people pop up, 
I had already had these dates and, and, and photos and everything already planned out since 2017. And now I'm just shelling them out for the year 2018. So when he had given me Damon John, I mean, I'd, I've always been a fan ever since I heard of who he was. I have always uh, been a fan. And in fact, the Damon John Academy had come to New Orleans and I had gone. I mean, I was serious about like trying to be a part of whatever it is he had going on. And so, you know, when I was trying to figure out like what exactly like I want to talk about or what does God want me to say? Like what how am I supposed to correlate this with you know, the whole mentor from afar thing, because of course we, beyond a shadow of a doubt, he's clearly a beast at mentorship and just reaching back, pulling forward. I mean, just tons of things that he consistently does. I'm sure privately, but I know publicly for sure, the things that I've seen, he has a heart to help people. So when I started to kind of, you know, just think about stuff, I started researching him. And again, with everybody, I have to research despite what I know, you know, because God knows that there are people that are going to hear this, that I don't know. And there are going to be things that he's going to use me to say, and I have to be in position to say it. And it can't not be about me. So again, if I would have went the way I was thinking, you would not have heard what you just heard. Now I'm quite sure you're like, man, this is, you know, I thought she was going to use something about business. Well, if you heard, uh, the episode from two weeks ago, which is with Oprah, called surrender that kind of set the tone for the kind of vibe I was going for with this entire process. So when I was thinking about Damon, I'm like, you know what? I just like how he grew up and how, you know, his mom taught him to sew. And I, I was thinking about all of these cool things he had done. And so while I was researching and I, I happened upon, you know, I saw that he had cancer and I was like, cancer, what? Let me go back and see, you know, what's going on. Cause I missed that. I wasn't aware of it. So when I started to do some research, I was just in shock. And for multiple reasons, because for one, cancer is something I'm extremely familiar with, with my family. Thank God I'm a healthy woman, but it has plagued people that I know near and dear to me for quite some time. So just to hear that and then to kind of begin to hear the backdrop and to research different things. Now, I heard multiple pieces on him talking about having cancer and I'm highlighting two. You just heard the first one and I'm going to let you hear something else in a moment. But I decided to call today divine intervention. And those are not my words. Those are Damon's words. Now, you didn't hear that in the piece before with Robin Roberts, but you will hear it in a moment. So, you know, I started to muse on everything he was saying. I was like, okay, God, what do you want me to pull out? Because this is about being a mentor from afar. This is about somebody who's away. And this is about somebody who, you know, people are known to look up to. You know, now, mind you, I'm going to tell you, I'm doing over 40 people in 2018. Everybody is not super famous. Everybody is not well known because I, I, I know that oftentimes people are mentored and they're in a position to help people and it has nothing to do with fame. It has nothing to do with notoriety. Sometimes people just have what it takes and, 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 and other people can learn and grow from them. I even have some children that will be highlighted this year. So that brings me back to, you know, the whole thing with Damon. And I said, okay, what, what stuck out to me? So number one, health is wealth. Okay. That's, if nothing else, that's paramount. And he kept talking about early detection. And, and mind you, and all of the other things I heard, that was his stance. He always talked about early detection, figuring things out first. Now, the next few minutes, I'm not making this about cancer or sickness or disease, but the next few minutes is going to be about, if God has you listening to me right now, what is he trying to tell you? Because he may have been talking about cancer and he may have been talking about something that he, you know, bless God, he was able to prevent. But what in your life right now could be a cancer to you and God's, God is trying to open a door so that you can prevent it? See, that's a word right there. That just blessed me. What is it that God is trying to show you? See, this was very literal. This is a very specific example of what he was going through. Okay. And he was very clear about it being cancer. He was also very clear about, okay, once we figured out what it was, I don't want to make this a thing like, you know, y'all don't have to like, you know, baby me or do all these other things. Not that he wasn't appreciative, but he realized that when he cut the fat, he cut the cancer. He had to keep it moving. He didn't want to let it, you know, keep him down. OK, so what is it that is cancerous in your life that you are allowing to keep you down right now? What is it? 
Are you, you worrying about a relationship? Are you worrying about money? Are you worrying about something that you could possibly change, but you just haven't had the courage or even the wherewithal to change it? Think about it. You know, one of the things that I, I noticed also when I was doing research, and I would encourage you guys, go to YouTube, Google, whatever your source is, and look up some more of the, the articles and interviews that he did concerning this because I was able to piece together a lot of stuff. That Robin Roberts interview was very short. I was trying to find something longer, but I was only able to get that and another piece of something that I thought would add value to what you know we're talking about right now. But think about this. He had come to a place in his life, and his career, where he's this big international mentor. Everybody knows all of these things about him, and he's always a boss. He's always balling. He's always well put together, suited and booted. He'll, you know, he'll outbid anybody in the room, rich family, friends, all of these things, right? But what happens when you get a bad report? Bad reports come to anybody, you know, good, bad, ugly, Poor, broke, rich, famous. It doesn't matter. Bad reports come to everybody. You know, the second thing that stuck out to me when he was talking about this, he said, you got to go public with your pain. And you know what people teach you who, that, that you see in positions of power a lot of times that talk about, you know, never let them see you sweat and do it. All I needed to do was hear Damon John say, go public with your pain. And I cannot remember specifically if he said it or if Robin Roberts, you know, segued into it and said, okay, so you decided to go public with your pain. I'm not quite sure who said what, but go back and play it and you'll hear it. Some of you need to go public with your pain. And some of you have not said why you really, you're really hurting because you feel like you cannot go public with your pain. And some of the things you are public about, you're selective about because you can control it. But guess what? The very thing that God wants you to address, that's the thing that's causing the cancer. That's the thing that's keeping you from excelling and doing the things that you need to do. That's the things that's, that's the thing that's causing you to pause in your success. Cause see, I can make this super churchy and super Jesusy, but you know what? It's not even about that. This is about on a very, small level, just on a tiny level about really paying attention when God does something in your life, really paying attention. Okay. Cause at the end of the day, y'all, we only have one life. So the question is, are you going to make good on it? What are you going to do with it? You know, and I was curious because he didn't say like a lot of the logistics of the story in this short interview. So I discovered that he said that he was able to find out what happened because he had taken this exam called an executive exam. Okay. Now this, this exam, he said is under controversy because it's so expensive. He said like your insurance can't pay for it. It's flat out 10 grand. It's a $10,000 exam. Okay. I'd never heard of it before until he said it. And he said the first time somebody told him, he didn't even know what they were talking about. He said he would always get well exams though. You know, he's like, he'd always go get, you know, the base, the basic checkups and, you know, cough and let me, you know, hold your hands up. Let me check your heart rate. You know, these are the things he said he would normally do. But it wasn't until he got this executive exam that things really changed. That was his game changer. Okay. And he said he had the means to do it. So he began to talk about that process and how, you know, it was exposed to him from something that he realized other people may not have the capability to get. And he started talking about how people, you know, you're looking up to all these rich and famous people and, you, and you, you, you're holding them up on this pedestal. And you're like, man, if I just had this and I just had that. He said, and it crossed my mind. I'm like, man, you know, you see people in Louis Vuitton, you see them in Mercedes Benz and all of this stuff. But then people don't have money to get a $10,000 well exam. Because if you're going to spend your money, you can spend your money on that. He said, and another thing I thought about, he said, people that have the means and the money in these million dollar companies, billion dollar companies, you know, that could be the gift to your employee, the $10,000 executive exam. And he just started to muse on things and how his perspective is changing now because of the situation that God brought him through. Now, what really blew my mind was this next thing that I heard him say out of his own mouth. And what I'm about to play is, in this particular video, he was talking about where they had to cut him. So he was showing a photo of, of, of his neck and like what had to happen. But I want you to listen to this quick snippet of what he said about that uh, section where they were about to cut him. Here it is. 
Sorry, guy. Oh, there it goes. You see the four dots across my neck. And miraculously, why is it under God and over blessed? So that's where they were going to cut me right there to take that thyroid out. A lot of you didn't know I had a lot of tats on me, right? But I wonder why that where they had to cut me was right under God, underlining God and highlighting bless. It's a whole nother story, right? Maybe it's divine intervention. So see, that tripped me out. And that's how come I came up with the title Divine Intervention. Because when you see the photo, y'all, I'm going to try to screenshot the photo and add it. Um, to my blog. That's what I'll do. I'm going to take a picture of it. I want you to go to my blog, hit the link below this podcast and go to blogging Robin. It's under I'm wired to inspire.com. And I'm going to give you a link to the actual video and you can actually see the photo of his neck. So he's tatted up and you would never know that because he's always suited up, but he's tatted up and on his neck, it says God bless. Okay. And he's like right in the middle of it, like right in the midst of everything going on. It was a message. It was a deep word. And I'm telling you, I was getting full looking at it because it just, it, it was so evident. And it was so obvious how God could use anything. God could use anything to let you know he is always in the building. And when I tell you it didn't matter that this man is, is a millionaire, billionaire, none of this stuff even mattered. He had come to a place in his life where it was about his health. It was about realizing another paramount thing he said in the first uh, video. We need each other. He said we need each other. How can we help each other if everything is about uh, getting the money, balling out of control? He was like, listen, if I can't be there to be with my daughters, if I can't be in my, my life actively the way I need to be, it's pointless. And he's right. So now I want to ask you guys another question. Is there anything in your life that's keeping you from the things that matter? Is there anything in your life that you are putting on a pedestal or anything in your life that you think, well, God has given me this platform for this and you're doing it for this, but maybe he's trying to get your attention with something else. This is the last and final point that stuck out to me. And he not only said it in this First video, but he also said it multiple times in the other things that I was learning about him while studying, preparing for this podcast. He said if his calling was for God to put him on the stage to save one person's life, then it was worth it. What is it that God is trying to show you that he put in your life to save another life? I literally heard this man say, Something to the effect of maybe this is why all of this happened. This is why I'm in this position. This is why I have fame, money, whatever. Just to be able to save lives because of this. Now, when I think about a mentor from afar, I already know it's not a person that I literally see and talk to every day. Or they they may not even know me like in this case. Well, let me say this. He does not know me yet. But we're going to be nice and chummy. I'm speaking and I'm claiming that because that is somebody that I genuinely have in my inner circle. He just doesn't know it yet. (laughs) But I will say this to you. It is very important that as God is strategically setting you up to even hear stuff like this, understand something. The antennas are up, the ears are open, and the stage is set. God is using people from all walks of life. He's using people in the most peculiar circumstances to not only give him glory, but he's teaching us how to teach others. And that's why when I think of Damon, it's far beyond FUBU and it's far beyond uh, Shark Tank and all of these other things. And even with even with his uh, relentless desire and calling to help people in entrepreneurship and business and to see their dreams come true and to create wealth for not only for himself, but also for his family and for other people's families. Uh, it, it's, it's a testament to him because now this incident that happened to him in 2017, it has also become a crusade for him. So what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is this. In his particular life, it was cancer. But what is it in yours? Because it may not be an ailment or a health issue, but it can be something life threatening, something I think people tend to forget or maybe they maybe not. I'm not going to say forget. I take that back. Something I think people don't realize is 
Sometimes the most life-threatening things have nothing to do with your health. Sometimes it's an unhealthy spirit. It's an unhealthy view. It's keeping people around you who don't belong. It's not rising up to the higher thing. It's keeping yourself at a minimal level because you're worried about money. You want to ball. You want to knock all your goals out. You want to you wanna do all of these things. Listen, there isn't one thing that I heard from this man, unless I missed it, even after this happened, where he stopped going hard and achieving his goals. But what he did make very clear was this. His priorities and how life should be have now been restructured. So if you get nothing else from what I'm telling you today, if there's anything in your life that needs to be restructured, if there is anything, if there is anybody that could be driving a wedge or causing to causing something to keep you from where it is you need to be, this is the time to address it. And, you know, I was listening to him talk about, um, what was it? Just getting checked in general. He's like, you know, it can't hurt. It can't hurt because even if you find out something, at least at least you won't be hurting about it later. So again, what is it that maybe God wants you to check on right now so that you won't be hurting about it later? What is it that he is trying to show you about the person that you are becoming? Because this is something that I have to say. There are tons of millionaires, there are tons of billionaires, there are tons of people who other people look up to, but it's a different type of person when they say, listen, I'm just like you. I may have taken my opportunities and I may have done this and I may have done that, but let me show you something. I'm just a man. I was sick. You know, I didn't go through any hard process. The Lord was able to find this cancer, take it out of me and I kept it moving. So you know what? I'm going to show y'all better than I can tell y'all. I got my life. I got my health and I'm going to help you to prevent this from happening to you. Not everybody is willing to do that. Not everybody is willing to say, hey, listen, this is what it's really like. I might be your mentor. I might be somebody that you look up to. But what I want you to do is this. Value your family. Value your life. Value the things that you are doing that are not frivolous. Life is not about frivolity. Life is about family. Life is about making memories. It's about joy. It's about happiness. It's about actually living. So if you get nothing else from this today... We know he's a baller. We know he's a boss. We know that he's all of these great things. But today, when you think about Damon John, I want you to think about how he's a grown man and he's a man that was vulnerable enough to deal with the bigger issue. What is it that you're dealing with that's the bigger issue that you've been too afraid to address? Now is the time to do it. I wish you courage and I pray that you can hear God clearly. I pray that if there are any barriers or any walls that are keeping you from looking at the greater good, the higher level that God is taking you to, I pray that you can see that because once you can see why God has you here, that even if you might, you may be successful, you may be somebody you're trying to become successful. It does not matter who you are listening to this. If you have everything and if you have nothing, the thing that I want you to be encouraged about is this, this story today with this man was to wire you and inspire you to live your authentic purpose. This was not about you listening to me. And this is not about you being like Damon or him even being a mentor. It's about you understanding that you have what it takes. And if God is trying to get you a message to to think about what your motives are behind what you're doing, if you need to dig deeper, if you need to change some things up, or if you're right on par with what you're supposed to be doing, don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to do it. Because guess what? Your purpose is not just about you. We are never put on this earth for it to be about us. And so I want to wrap up reminding you guys with the points that stuck out to me with our mentor today. And it was that your health is wealth. Success is about being out there with our families and enjoying their lives and enjoying our lives with them. A reminder that we need each other. And y'all don't forget, sometimes it is okay to go public with your pain. And lastly, If there is something that God is telling you to do that may have been life changing or life threatening, it could be the very calling that God is giving you to set the stage for change. I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'm Wired to Inspire dot com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five star rating on iTunes. 
For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the Inspiration Specialist.life or I'm Wired to Inspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.